And so if you're using a DEXA scan compared to underwater weighing or skin full testing, all of them are just a guess. Coach Greg, in today's video, what does 10% body fat actually look like in the real world? There are so many different forms of testing that no one seems to understand exactly what 10% really looks like. Some people seem to think they're 10% when they're actually 20, while others are so shredded they're 6%, but they're actually 10. And so it really depends on the form of testing that you're going to use. And so in today's video, we're going to examine different forms of body fat testing, tell you which are the best and why, and did Omar El Souf actually get it right. Your body fat percentage is the percentage, the amount of fat that you have relative to everything else. So your non-fat mass. And so what he says is when you see people claim various body fat percentages online, they're either A, lying, or B, highly misinformed. They don't know what they actually are. So you see someone's current body fat percentage, you compare it to yourself, and you have no idea what percent you actually are in the real world. And so perhaps he hasn't watched enough of Coach Greg's videos. I've explained this in detail to time and time again, but he's going to go to one of the best clinics in the world with the most advanced technical equipment to determine people's body fat. Only it's not. It's not, Omar. It's still full of mistakes. To go to arguably the most advanced place to test your body fat in North America, shout out to Dr. Grant Tinsley. And so I was hoping he was going to say it was Coach Greg's house with his laser eyes, but yet instead of that, he said it's Grant Tinsley, PhD. Who is currently conducting very important research as it relates to body comp and other things. There's only one test that's actually really accurate aside from my laser eyes, and that is an MRI scan. Every other test, don't care which one it is, DEXA scan and so on, all of them are guesses. They're literally estimating how much body fat that you actually have. It's the same as I do with my laser eyes. I joke and say I'm the most accurate in the world, but it's because I feel I almost am. Aside from the MRI scan, I don't know of any test that's actually accurate. Bod pod, super interesting. I even managed to find out there's a separate from my BMR where they did that test. Uh, you know, bioimpedance, there, there's uh, different levels of this of how much they could cost. And so whether it's a bod pod or bioimpedance test or DEXA scan, hydrostatic weighing, skin fold test, they are all estimating based on mathematical formulas equations what your body fat percentage really is. They're not 100% accurate. And so just because it says you're a certain number doesn't mean that you actually are. And yes, there are of course ways to manipulate this. If I, for example, consume a lot of carbs, water, and sodium and get extremely bloated, I could in one day show that I gained over five kilograms, 11 pounds of muscle, just from drinking and consuming more food. The machine could not tell the difference. It doesn't know that I had a big meal, drank a lot of water, or that perhaps I took diuretics and got extremely dehydrated. And so it's very easy to manipulate the data to show whatever you want it to show. You could have gained a lot of lean tissue or lost a lot of lean tissue. If you know what you're doing, you can very easily manipulate these tests. DEXA, which shoots essentially x-rays through your body so you can find out your bone density. Fun fact, side note, your boy right here, 4.8 standard deviations higher than normal. Just call me the elephant man. And so is he really really 4.8 standard deviations above the mean, that would be the bone density roughly of one in a million. Well, it might be, or it might be just a little bit off. We don't know. Does he really have the bone density of Wolverine or is it just perhaps a little bit off? We don't really know. Let's put up my hunky colleague once again, Eric Helm. And so based on what I'm seeing, the guy looks shredded, clearly single digit body fat, perhaps around seven or 8%. But remember, I don't see his legs, I don't see his hamstrings, I don't see his back. It's impossible to make an accurate prediction of body fat percentage using your laser eyes without seeing the entirety of the body. Be like showing a girl from behind, seeing amazing glutes and saying, guess her bra size. I don't know. Based on the fact that she has amazing glutes, perhaps she's a bikini competitor, probably a D cup. But it's a guess. You don't know the same thing applies to your body fat. How can I judge a person's body fat percentage just by looking at their six pack when I haven't seen their legs? I don't know. People often carry more body fat in one area of the body than another. It's normal. Same way in that some girls have very large glutes but have a small chest. It's depending on your genetics. Hopefully you say no it doesn't. He clearly looks less than that. But the most wildly available at home body fat tool measured him at 17% body fat. And so yet the most advanced at home testing kit, perhaps it was a Tanika scale, I don't know exactly, using bioimpedance had him at 17% body fat. Did he look 17% body fat to you. And so if this is the most accurate method, we've seen Eric Helms, guy looks shredded, 
How could you possibly base your body fat percentage on what a scale tells you it is? It's clearly useless. You're better off looking in the mirror yourself and taking a wild guess. Afterwards, we did the DEXA scan. And I'm reading this on the screen, and I do not at all believe this to be the case. I've done countless videos talking about how ineffective the DEXA scan is, despite the fact that people think it's the industry standard. Many people consider DEXA scans to be the industry standard for measuring body fat. This is where we're going wrong. Two wrongs don't make a right. Just because the DEXA scan says your body fat is a certain method doesn't mean another method is wrong. For example, Will Tennyson sent me his Desi Sand results. Said 9.7%. Said, Coach Greg, there's no way that I'm this lean. Had to agree. You're not as lean as the Dexa Scan stated. It's a mistake, an error. When you see Will Tennyson, you can see the back shredded. But when you compare it to the legs, legs not nearly as lean. And so in no way is Will Tennyson 9.7%, but yet the Dexa Scan said so. And you may remember Brian Shaw, when got his Dexa Scan done, guy had lost over 20 pounds of muscle in a month. Month. You really think he lost 20 pounds of muscle? Of course not. But yet the DEXA scan said so. And why is it? Because the DEXA scan is a guess. It's an educated guess, but it's shown to be off by as much as 15% up or 15% down. That is a tremendous margin of error. And so unless it's an MRI, something that only Brian Johnson, not the liver king, the guy who wants to live forever, the vampire. Only a guy like that with so much money he doesn't know what to do with it is going to have an MRI machine to test his body fat. And what if found that in his trunk region, by its estimation, he was sitting at around 6 point something percent body fat in his core. But interestingly enough, when we take a look at his lower body, it was several percentage points higher. And so if you notice Eric Helms, for example, 6.7% in his core, look at the abs. He does appear shredded. I would have to say he looks to be close to 7% or lower in his abs, but when you glance at his legs, they're not nearly as lean, just over 11% body fat. And so if you take the average, overall, he's perhaps slightly below 10% body fat. I'm gonna show you some footage. I want you to guess for the surf plan what you think I was. And seeing Omar Yusuf, the guy does have abs. He's not flexing all the time. And I would say he was slightly below 15% body fat. He looks to be very healthy. If anyone were to have the same body type as Omar El Souf, I do believe they should in fact be happy. And I was 13.7% body fat. And Omar Yusuf's test on the DEXA scan, 13.7%. He says those are shocking results. I don't know if he thought he was far leaner or far fat. I don't know why he thinks this is shocking. I would have expected somewhere around there. And so why is he shocked? But consider this. The bod pod had him at 9.2. No way would I've had Omar Yusuf at under 10% body fat. Makes no sense. There's a big difference, huge, between somebody close to 15% and somebody who's in the single digits. Consider this. 7.5% is quite literally half of 15. And so if you're at 15%, go to 7.5, you've lost half of your body fat. That is a tremendous difference. And so in no way should a bod pod have had him under 10% body fat. It's ridiculous. And so does that not show just how inaccurate these things really are where my gut i'm holding a lot of my fat in my gut eric on the other hand it's distributed more towards his legs and so look at these two photos omar el suf is saying look at how much fat i'm holding on my abs he has shredded abs. This is a very defined, clearly visible six pack. But in comparison, Eric Helms way leaner. You can see a clear and significant difference between the body fat of Omar and Eric Helms. So we're just using the eyeball test. I mean, Eric definitely looks leaner, but he looks more than 3% leaner, I would say. And I, I think that's a very fair assessment. And so using the eyeball test, Coach Greg's later eyes, you can see that Eric Helms looks more than 3% leaner than Omar Yusuf. And you know why? Because he actually is. Just because the test says, Omar, you're 3% body fat higher than Eric, doesn't mean it's actually 3%. The test was a guess. It wasn't an MRI. If you're using a bod pod or an electrical impedance test or a DEXA scan, it's guessing your body fat percentage. It's a guess. And so when I sit with my laser eyes and watch Eric Helms versus Omar Yusuf, I can guarantee that if Omar lost 3% body fat, which based on the fact that he weighs 182 pounds is 5 pounds of fat, if he went down to 177 losing 5 pounds of fat, he would not nearly be as shredded as Eric Helms. And so the proof is in the pudding. 
Woody. If you were actually going to diet and drop five pounds of fat, would he be as shredded as Eric? The answer is no. And so you can easily state that Omar has more than 3% body fat higher than Eric. It's as simple as that. I don't care what the research says. I don't care what the DEXA, BOD, POD, body fat, skin full, whatever test you're using, I don't care. It's not accurate. And so please don't base your self-worth on what your number on the scale tells you. If it says you're 19% body fat, but you have a six pack and you love your body, don't think that you're suddenly fat. Well, at the same time, if it says you're 10% and you have a gut hanging out, don't think you're actually shredded. As an advanced lifter, you know, you're only gaining three or four pounds at most, at most of non-fat mass per year. Exactly. If you're an advanced lifter, you're at most gaining three or four pounds in a year naturally. You're not going to suddenly gain 10 or 15 pounds as an advanced level lifter. And so if you see somebody putting on, say, 10 pounds of muscle in under a year and they're already an advanced lifter, they're probably not natural. Okay, I was 18 years old. I went from 140 pounds to 215 pounds. And I thought I was 16% body fat. I was closer to 26% body fat. Exactly. I tell people this all the time and I want to hammer home this point. When you go on a bulk and you put on a lot of weight, you're going to be overestimating how much of that bulk is actually muscle versus how much of it is water and or fat. Omar went up to 215 pounds on a bulk thought he was 16% body fat, but as you can see in the picture, that is not 16%. Omar himself says it was probably closer to 26%. This happens all the time. Remember, I've coached thousands of athletes, and all the time, they go on the bulks, they put on muscle, and they think, wow, look, I put on 20 pounds of muscle this year. I'm like, wait until you diet. You're then going to discover that you probably only put on three or four pounds. They go on a diet, they think, wow, I'm flat. What happened? I lost all my muscle. I'm like, you didn't lose all your muscle. You just thought you had muscle that you hadn't built in first place and some people unfortunately get stuck in that perpetual yo-yo system where they'll gain weight gain extra fat they'll attempt to lose it a year and a half later lean down and kind of look like the same version of themselves and so omar states exactly why i tell people to main gain all these people bulking and cutting which is literally yo-yo dieting they think they're putting on all this muscle but in reality they're actually not and so why not just main gain continue to main gain at a healthy body fat percentage for you around 15 percent for most people perhaps lower for some higher for others and over time, you're slowly going to put on that muscle, three or four pounds a year. Perhaps that's how much you're going to gain. If you have amazing genetics, you're going to put on more. And if you have a shit genetics, you're going to put on less. And so why are people guessing their body fat wrong? And he says there's two main reasons. The first being the eyeball test. And they're using their own eyeballs. They look at themselves in the mirror and they look on the internet and say, yeah, I'm probably 15%. But remember, it's not my laser eyes. I've been doing this for decades. And so I have a lot of experience. Perhaps they're only looking at their core. They're looking at their abdominals. They see a six pack. They think, wow, I'm probably 6%. But if they don't see abs, they might think they're 30% but they're not looking at their hamstrings, they're not looking at their glutes, their back, their quads, and so on, and so they have very inaccurate estimations. Really good physique coaches, like if I was to give Eric or Alberto Nunez or, or Cliff Wilson, like these top tier natural bodybuilding coaches of physique, I think they can get it within two to three percentage points. And so these advanced level coaches who coach these people all the time, he states they can get to within two or three percent. And so notice he didn't mention Coach Greg. Only Coach Greg can be more accurate than that because I've done this my entire career. The second way that they would do it, some influencers, your favorite influenza, they do get a DEXA scan, which I just said can be quite accurate. Now, unfortunately, there are ways of manipulating this. And so the second problem is people go and use a DEXA scan and think that's the holy grail when it's not. They get a DEXA scan like Will Tennyson did. It stated 9.7% and they believe that's the holy grail and so they get it wrong. But Will, smart enough, he's intelligent. He knows that this is not accurate. He's seen other athletes. He knows what 9.7% looks like. And so he's not going to rely on just one number. He messages me. Hey, what percent do you think I actually am? Can you examine these photos? And we had a guy like Joe Fazier thought he was 15% body fat sent me photos it's like dude you're single digits you are shredded and so oftentimes people have body dysmorphia they don't see the accurate reflection selves in the mirror all they see is the extra fat the flaws and so on they don't see how great they actually are and so people they make mistakes and so if you're relying on the scales at home dexa scans and so on they're not going to be accurate and so what is my recommendation if you want to know what body 
healthy fat percentage you are? Well, aside from hiring Coach Greg and showing front to back, top to bottom, you can look at my videos where I've assessed other people's body fats. Look at their physiques and the percent that I gave them and compare that to yourself. Do you have the same appearance of body fat in upper, lower body, front to back as a certain individual I did on YouTube? I've done so many videos like this, it should be very easy for you to compare yourself to one of these images and find someone who's just about accurate in terms of what your physique is. And I've done this for not only shredded bodybuilders, but also for guys who have a far higher body fat percentage. For example, Brett Lee G, who I stated at the start of his diet was perhaps 65% body fat. He later did an online calculator test that said he was 40%. And I made a video, said, I'm sorry to break it to you, but it's over 50%. Doesn't make sense sense that you're close to 500 pounds at 40% body fat. It wouldn't make sense. And so sometimes the truth can hurt. But remember, what I say is I tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And so perhaps you have a higher body fat percentage than you think. I oftentimes run to people at the gym and they say, hey, what percent body fat do you have? For example, I saw one girl. She said, I'm about 22%. I said, yeah, it's probably 36%. Another time a girl said she had 9% body fat. I said, you're closer to 18. 18 being very lean, very athletic, very far below average, and so it still hurts their feelings. People don't like to know that they have more body fat on them than they actually have. But I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to bullshit you. Same as I do with all of my supplements. I never lie about what my supplements can do. And so whether it's Ecti Builder or GO2 Max, G-Test, all the supplements I'm saying, they all can be of benefit. And if you're interested in any of my supplements, don't forget Code Greg, 10% off. I think basically you need to weigh a couple different variables and measure each of them over time. And the one that isn't sexy, but I come back to consistently would be your progress in the gym. And so Mara says to track your progress about how much you're lifting in the gym. Personally, I'd rather see your median weight. If you're trying to put on weight, try to compare your median weight this week to your median weight the next. Is it going up slowly? If it is, you're doing it right. If it's going up too quickly, you're eating too much, slow it down. If you're trying to lose weight, make sure that from one week to next, your weight is going down by just a little bit, perhaps half a percent of your body weight, one pound in a single week. If you're losing weight too quickly, eat a little bit more because if you lose weight too fast, you're going to lose muscle. This is not what you want. And so remember, in conclusion, none of the tools you're using to assess body fat are actually accurate. Only the MRI scan can accurately tell you what your body fat percentage is. And so if you're using Using a DEXA scan compared to underwater weighing or skin full testing, all of them are just a guess. And so rather than that, base your progress on how much you weigh on the scale. Not on any random day, but the average of the weights that you've been weighing in or the median weight. Track it from week to week. If you're trying to get leaner, try to lose weight each and every week. If you're trying to gain weight, try to get bigger slowly over time. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm, like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to watch one of the boops and of course the cookbooks to train training books, the coaching plans by me and my team, the harder than last time clothing line as well as the circle diet book. You can get it all on my website. And if you want a free diet and training program, don't forget to head over to the website, enter your first and last name and email address, had two scoops of pre-workout 3.0. Can't wait to hit the gym. Look for that on the website. Could have come out sooner than last time. And until next time, I am out.